Can you see me now? Okay. I think I might be live. <laughs> this is my first time going live, so um, please cut me a little slack. But I do want to treat this kind of like it's a uh, regular video because I want people to be able to watch this back. And um, I want to put timestamps in it and everything. But um, welcome if you're in here. Uh, hold on, hold on, sorry. One second. Okay. If you're in here, welcome to today's live. Um, this is my first time going live, like I said. But I wanted to talk about my strategy for buying and selling moments. Okay, I see people are in here because I see comments now. Okay, cool. Shout out to Steph, Sudo, my sister, um, Antonio, Patchmade, Chris, Scott, Ben. What's up? Welcome. <laughs> cool. All right, so let's get started. Let me get my notes here. I got some notes. My sister let me borrow her laptop because I'm not cool enough to have two. All right. What's up, Jay? Jay's always commenting on my videos. Oh, we got two Jays in here. Derek, how's it going? All right, so um, first of all, my strategy when it comes to top shots, you have to kind of um, realize my goal, which is first of all, to own as many S1 rares and S1 legendary moments as I possibly can. Like literally I'm trying to get like as many S1 rares and legendaries as I can. Doesn't even, I don't even care about the players. Like I literally just want S1 rares and legendaries. Um, I think that they're the most valuable moments in my opinion. And, um, one hour, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. I should set a timer. Actually, I can see I've been live for two minutes now. Um, but yeah, um, so with that being said, back when I started in October, um, I initially invested a couple thousand dollars um, and I had bought a lot of packs. You know, I bought, I bought a lot of um, S1 rare moments and, you know, at the time things were really inexpensive. So S1 rares were like nine to $12, like the floor. And then, um, you know, S1 Commons were going for like a dollar. I didn't actually even really buy many of those, but I had bought a lot of packs. So I had a lot from uh, packs, um, which I did open my packs back then. <laughs> now I don't open my packs, but um, I used to open my packs because there's, you know, that's kind of the easiest way to get started is just start opening your packs. Obviously, the moments inside are, are you know, worth, worth a good amount of money and you can flip and you can then reinvest the profits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, but since October, I've, I've really, I haven't really invested much more. Um, I've probably put a couple hundred dollars in maybe in like January or something. I probably put a couple hundred dollars extra, but I would say overall I've invested less than like, Hey, Barbell's in here. Shout out to Barbell. He's a good friend. Pack hoarder. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of a pack hoarder. Um, I've invested a little bit less. I've probably invested a little bit less than 5k. If I had a guess, and I really should know the exact amount, but I really don't. So, um, but yeah, so basically since then, um, it's kind of like in order to play with your profits and be able to reinvest your profits, you have to sell stuff. You have to sell some of your things. And it's like, it can be hard to let go of some of your moments, you know, when you want to just hold on to them, or at least for me, I'm like, I just want to huddle everything. But if I want to ultimately get as many S1 rares and legendary moments as possible, then I need to really be smart with, um, you know, selling and then reinvesting the profits and then using the profits to reinvest into other moments. So I'm gonna talk about a few um, strategies that I like to uh, use um, uh, to, to kind of maximize my capital and to really um, try to just continue to grow a bigger and bigger portfolio and you know more and more moments, more valuable and all that. Um, Serious question, anything make you just sister qualified in giving advice other than being early financial background, sports cards? Um, so we've been, um, in the crypto world for several years now. So we've invested in cryptocurrency, um, you know, years ago and just been really active in the space. I've probably spent thousands and thousands of hours, um, listening to cryptocurrency podcasts and watching technical analysis videos, even though I literally don't necessarily like to trade 
crypto. I just like to huddle it, but um, I watch a lot of videos and then try to educate myself as much as I can. Um, but yeah. Okay. So no, hate, no hate though. Just curious. Yeah. I, I appreciate you for uh, being curious. Um, okay. So let's see here what I'll put down. Um, okay. So the first thing I wanted to say is it's always great to sell when you're profitable, which is easier said than done, honestly, because um, with what we saw with the last pump was it's like, you know, when things are going up and everyone's like top shot to the moon. And then it's like, you're like, Oh, well, it's just going to go higher. It's just going to go higher. Like I should, I, I, I'm not going to sell yet. Cause I can make so much more if I wait it, wait another day or wait another week. And it's like, you know, maybe you're five X prof profitable. Maybe you're like 10 X, you know, your initial investment on a moment. Maybe you bought a moment for a hundred dollars and now it's going for a thousand and you're like, well, this could go to 2000, you know? And so you just keep holding on. Um, but the thing is, it is good to sell when you're profitable. Um, and, you know, you're never going to 100% sell at the very peak. And you're never going to 100% sell at the dip. But it's like, as long as you can sell when you're profitable and reinvest those profits into something else, then, you know, good, good on you. Um, but... I saw a lot of people, um, actually, I always get a lot of messages and sometimes people are like, they're like, man, I should have sold, you know, at this time when it was this much, but I didn't, I held on because I thought it was going to go even higher. And um, you have to kind of understand that there'll be cycles, you know, yeah, it'll go back up again, but, you know, moments will take a dip, moments will pump, et cetera, et cetera. So don't be afraid to let go of your moments if you're profitable on them, unless you really want to hold them long term. So for me, um, I really like to hold S1 uh, rares and S1 legendaries long term, and I really don't like to sell those. If I have to sell one, it's either because I bought it from the last, I bought it maybe kind of like bought it high in the last pump, and I'm like, okay, well, now that I'm like profitable on it, I might as well flip it. Um, so that's the case sometimes. Or... I'm just like desperate and I'm like, okay, like I'm so over leveraged on this. Like I need the capital to buy these other things. I'm just going to sell some. But for the most part, I try not to sell my S1 rares or S1 legendary moments. Um, and even my S1 commons, I try not to sell, but sometimes I do. Um, but uh, some of the ways that I like to uh, get more capital to invest in the stuff that I really want to hold more long term is, for example, um, this is something that I've done multiple times. Um, so when I first started out, I had a lot of S1 commons that I had gotten from PAX and that were going for around, you know, one to $2 at the time. And during January, during that, that first pump, um, I actually ended up flipping, I ended up selling, you know, quite a handful of my S1 commons and actually buying an S1 legendary moment with it, which is like, Super cool, like the fact that you can just sell your commons and flip your way up to a legendary moment. I think that's awesome. And um, I actually ended up doing kind of the same strategy uh, around when S2 commons came out. And, you know, they had those out of 15,000, which seemed like so much at the time. And, um, you know, at the time, the ones out of 15,000, probably not even like a month ago, were going for like $2. And I was just, buying them, buying them, buying them, you know, stacking up because I knew that people didn't really care about them because they were abundant. And it's kind of like a good rule of thumb to buy things when people don't care about them and then sell them when everyone does. So I, I bought a good amount of $2 moments, which by the way, I will be doing again, um, you know, out of 15,000. And then um, when they were saying, okay, things are about to go LE, I sold some stuff off in anticipation of that because people were buying in anticipation and I wanted to kind of for risk management, I didn't know whether they were going to extend it to be out of more of a circulating count or LE the moments. So I did sell some of my $2 moments at about, um, you know, $11. Like I remember Nerlens Noel, I was buying him at $2, $3. And then I was selling him, um, you know, the day before they LE'd everything. I didn't know they were going to LE everything. So I was selling to kind of, you know, for some risk management there, I was like, okay, just in case they extended, I need to make sure like he was going for $11. So I sold a bunch of him for $11. And then when they LED everything, he was going for like 15 and not just him. He's just one example, but I'm just saying, um, 
um, a lot of the $2 moments, they started to go up for a lot more because everyone's like, oh, it's LE. All of a sudden, it's important. It's limited edition, which, you know, I find that it's like it's best to buy things when people are just like, nah, it's abundance. Like, who cares? And then sell it when everyone's like, oh, shit, like now I need to get them. Like, all of a sudden, it's LE, even though, you know, literally the day before that, it was CC and it was going for a lot less, you know. So I will be doing that again. I think um, someone said, so you're saying buy 35,000 CC right now. I'm not saying buy them right now. I'm personally not going to be buying. Yeah, Steph said 70% of supply for 35 CC is not out yet. I'm not going to be buying the 35,000 uh, CCs yet because I think they're too expensive in my opinion. And I know you can't perfectly time things right, but I try my best too because I have a lot of time on my hands and I am always on top shot. So I'm not buying those yet. Um, I am going to be waiting until they, until a good chunk of them are going for like one to two dollars. I think that we'll see two dollar moments again soon, and I think that um, people aren't going to care about them, and they'll be two dollars for a little while. But those would be nice to scoop up, you know. At least just put. I mean, I'm going to put at least a hundred dollars into just buying two dollar moments, maybe more, and then just waiting. And, and those are kind of hard because you know the, the, those will stay two dollars for a little while. Um, before they actually appreciate. So people do tend to get impatient. I'll be honest, I have um, sold, uh, this is like embarrassing, but it's like I have flipped some $2 moments for $3, you know, making like seven, not 70 cents. I don't know how much that would be, like literally like a couple cents, like 30 cents or something. All because I was like impatient, it was taking too long. But if you can be willing to wait, um, it's worth it. It's always, it's always like, worth it you know 10x gains sometimes more sometimes less but it's like those are great and then you know with the capital from that i like to then reinvest into other things either other moments you know that i'm looking to flip down the road or um you know long-term models it kind of depends so another strategy of mine currently please hold while i sit my lacroix Another strategy, and by the way, I'll look at the questions in just a second. Another strategy um, that I'm currently looking at is badge moments. So there are some moments that are going to be getting badges. There's rookie badges. There's uh, first moment badges. And um, and actually, Kenny G, if you guys follow him on Twitter, maybe I'll retweet it after this. He has a spreadsheet of all of the moments that are going to be getting badges um all the moments that are gonna be getting rookie badges and first moment badges and so i had um bought a lot of uh moments that are gonna be getting these badges just to flip once they come out with the badges i don't even care that they have the badges i'm just like okay i know that all of a sudden these badges are gonna be like the shiny new thing and people are gonna really like gravitate towards them which they said you know potentially end of this month early next month um, and that's when I'll flip them. I don't particularly care to hold on to them long term. I'm more about S ones, like I said before. So with these S two moments that I'm buying, like you know, the S one out of twelve thousands, those are getting first moment badges. Those are going for pretty cheap. Um, I'm I haven't bought any lately, but I um back when they were cheaper, I was buying um, two digits of those for like under a hundred just to flip, you know, during that badge time. Um, okay, before we move on to the next thing, let me just look to see what's happening over here. All right, so let's take a look. Um, be greedy when others, hey, barbell is in here. Be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. I like the rookies, 35K rookies. Why are you bearish on the Seeing Stars Challenge? Why am I bearish on it? I, I, I never said I'm bearish on the Seeing Stars Challenge. Actually, that was the next thing I was going to talk about. I actually bought some um, Seeing Stars moments for, uh, I wanted to buy them for under i'm like so particular like i'm just i'm not just buying like at the moment i see it i'm like oh perfect i want this i'm gonna buy it. i literally will like watch moments wait for the price to be what i want it to be and then buy so i've bought about five seeing stars moments so far um all for under around like 150 so 
the the most expensive one I bought was like 159. Well, I bought a Chris Paul number nine seeing stars moment for a thousand dollars, but that's a long term model. And I eventually plan to flip that for 9K months from now. Um, but besides that, like just floor, buying floor seeing stars, I did buy um, four. Well, I guess I bought four, not five, because one of them was Chris Paul. I bought four seeing stars floor um, moments for like 150. And the reason why is because, first of all, I don't think those have reached their full potential. That yes, there's a challenge going on right now. And typically moments are inflated during challenges. But we are in a, in a dip, and actually, they really haven't inflated much. The most the seeing stars moments have been, as far as the floor goes, is like 200, and, and they're at 150 right now. And I feel like they have the potential to be a lot higher. But um, I actually am not buying those to flip during this KD challenge necessarily. It does depend what they end up going up to. If I – if if I can um, uh, flip for a 3x profit during this KD challenge, then I will. But most likely what I'm doing, what I'm ultimately doing is I am holding on to these seeing stars moments until they come out with the, I don't know for sure that the LeBron challenge is going to be a master challenge where they require all the seeing stars moments. But I think that it, I think that it's pretty possible. So I am saving these until then. Um, and then flipping then. But, you know, if they 3x before then, then I'll flip them. Um, so it's kind of like, that's like my quick flip material, some quick flip material stuff. I guess it's not too quick. It's more of like midterm. But um, can you withdraw yet? Yes, I personally have the ability. Have I withdrawn yet? No, I haven't. Should I withdraw? Probably. I probably should, but I haven't. Um, okay. What do you mean by getting badges? Um, so, so, so is seeing stars a badge? No. Seeing stars is a limited edition, special common set. Um, badges are things that aren't, you don't, they aren't on the website yet, but basically the moments themselves are going to get badges. Like they're going to get indicators that it was the first, the player's first moment on the site. Um, it's going to get, uh, uh, there's a rookie badge where it's like they're a rookie this year. And um, Jordy TV, what's up? Shout out to Jordy TV. Um, Barbell is real. Barbell is the real MVP. Okay. Uh, is pricing already baked into the rookie badge, badge moment? So um, Kenny G, who I was talking about, he did the spreadsheet. We were, um, he was hosting this clubhouse uh, talking about Top Shot and Steph and I were one of the panelists on it, and um, somebody literally asked that exact question. Maybe it was you. I don't know. But they said, is pricing already baked into the rookie badge moments? And I think no. And he said no as well, actually. And the reason why I think no is because most people do not know things beyond what the website says. So even though they have come out with a blog post about it, and even though... Um, they like it like you can find it you know on certain people's twitter's accounts and such most people do not do extensive research and um therefore i do not think that the rookie prices are the, the prices are already baked into the rookie badge moments i personally don't think they are i really don't i think that when the badges come out they're gonna look super cool and super like shiny new objects type of thing and people are gonna be like oh my god i have to get a moment with one of these badges type of thing and that is when people like me will be selling them to the people that really want them and they will be value i i think they will go up in price and um you know if they don't come if if signups are still disabled, like worst case scenario, signups are still disabled when they come out with their rookie badges. Maybe the prices don't budge from what they are now. Highly doubt it though. I really do highly doubt it. I think the prices will go up a lot for that. Um, okay. Let, let's see what else we got here. Uh, I don't think, uh, okay. Okay. Somebody said, I don't think seeing stars are going to go crazy like the cool cats. Let go of all mine. Wow. Okay. Here's why I think the seeing stars will go crazy, like the cool cats. Well, maybe not like the cool cats. I don't know, because the cool cats is really interesting, because that is so drawn out and extended. There's been like five cool – well, in total, there will be five cool cats drops before there's that Master LaMelo challenge. But 
we know, this is what we know. We know that there is a seeing stars reward moment. Oh, wow. I just realized there's 138 people in here. I hadn't even looked at that. Well, there we go. We got 138 people in here. Woohoo. Okay. Sorry, I got distracted. I didn't even see that. Okay. Here's why I don't think that, 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 uh, what was the question? I don't think S. Uh, seeing stars are going to go crazy. Okay, here's why I think they're still underrated, to be honest, and this is why I bought some, is because we know that LeBron is a reward challenge. We don't know what is required for that LeBron reward challenge, but I have a feeling it's not going to be easy. <laughs> That's for sure. And, and um, you know, KD, I don't know what, 12 of the moments were required for KD's challenge or something like that. And everyone's like, well, maybe the other 12 will be required for the LeBron challenge. And I'm like, hmm, maybe. Or maybe all of them will be required. I don't know. But I did get a sprinkle. I got um, a couple moments that are um, required for the KD challenge. That way, you know, worst case scenario, I just flip if those, if those like 3X, you know, sometime during the challenge. And then I also got some that aren't part of that KD challenge, you know, in case they are required for LeBron. So I do, I do think that those have potential to um, grow a lot bigger than they have already, than they have grown, because they haven't even grown. Like they literally haven't even, they're not even hype, which is crazy, because usually um, challenge moments, you know, pump a lot during, during the challenges, but they really haven't pumped much. Um, okay. Okay. Who cares what's required for the LeBron challenge? We'll do it. Exactly, Eric. People will do it. No matter what is required, they'll be like, oh my God, what's required? This is required? Great. I'll get whatever it takes. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll pay whatever amount I, I need to pay because I could potentially get a number one LeBron, you know, because it's random, the serial numbers that you get for the rewards. I personally don't really do challenges. I don't have that much capital, but I'll buy moments in anticipation for a challenge to flip during that time. So I can make a great profit and invest into what really matters for me. Um, someone said they got to let new users in. Apparently, yesterday they re-enabled signups. So you're making me nervous now about LeBron. I have his team so far, so I thought I was ready. <laughs> All right. Um, wanted to get Zion, but not in my range. Yeah, and you know what? It's like for me, I I bought like four of the Seeing Stars moments at, at one hundred and fifty dollars. I'm not willing to spend, you know, what is I'm going for like four or five hundred. I'm not willing to spend that much. Um, I'm not willing to risk that much personally. But um, it was the players he picked for his team that were his challenge. I would assume, uh, yeah. And and people and some people are assuming that LeBron James would be the team that he picked, but also. You know, why is there just a random Mike Conley challenge and there's now there's another seeing stars moment out there? Like, you know, is it going to be a master LeBron? I don't know. I don't know. Um, are you doing the rising star challenge too? I'm priced out. I'm priced out. I, I don't like to spend too much money on S2s, to be honest, unless it's like a really good cereal. I, I have one. I did buy one because... Um, yeah, I bought one. I bought, um, I think I bought Brandon Clark two digit cereal for like $540. Um, just to have one. But yeah. Okay, they said new user signups are back. <laughs> I love how stuff's in here. All right. If you buy in at the right price for KD SS Challenge, it could be a break even just for KD with the potential to be a bottleneck for LeBron. Yeah. Um, Shout out to LaCroix. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wonder how much the KD will go for. Not sure if I'll buy it or not, but we'll see. Okay. Is the newest All-Star Family Challenge? All-Star Family? What's All-Star Family Challenge? A pity challenge for those who don't got capital for the other challenges. Is it worth it? Are you talking about the Mike Conley Challenge? Are you saying, okay, so you're saying, is it worth it if you don't have the capital for the other challenges? It's up to you. That's completely up to you. I'm personally not doing the Mike Conley challenge. Challenges are for the whales only. I mean, you have to have a lot of capital. I would just rather, I would just rather flip moments during challenges, like 
because the, the prices are inflated during that time, personally. Around how much worth of movements in S1 long-term investments do you have? Around how much worth of movements? What do you mean movements? Okay, let me let me let me say this. I look at prices a lot of, of moments that I'm interested in, which you know, for example, S1 common, I'm always looking at the floor on the S1 common. Oh, literally every single day, multiple times a day, I'm checking the floor just to see what it's at. And and um so here's something interesting, right? Back in, you know, October, November, even December, the floor for S1 Commons were a dollar, right? And then, you know, during that January pump, the they peaked at about, I want to say they peaked about $25 as, as the floor for those S1 Commons. Um, and then there was a dip and they dipped and then they, the dip, they were at $13, which if you guys remember that video that I made where I was like, what I'm currently buying and I was buying $13 S1 Commons. Um, that was the floor for the S1 Commons. And now, the, and then there was a pump again. Okay, the most recent, the last pump, they uh, peaked at like about 125 was like the peak for the S1 Commons. And now they're at about 85, I believe. Um, I was definitely selling some of the ones that I bought for $13 at, you know, 100. <laughs> I was like, damn, like that's like a 10. That's like an 8X or something. Like that's pretty good. So I did let go of some S1 comments and then, you know, reinvest the profits into other things that I want to get. And I also saved up capital because I wanted to save up capital for this dip run right now. But um, I am kind of waiting to buy some more S1 comments, to be honest. I do kind of think that they have the potential to dip below 70 I don't know for sure. I'm watching them. You know, if we start to get into another pump, then I will start buying a bunch. But I am kind of waiting. I don't think we're at the complete low point of the dip yet. And I am kind of waiting to buy, to stock up on some more S1 commons. But I did sell a lot of them at the last peak when they were, you know, going for 100 plus. All right. Um, you got a two-digit serial rising star for 500. Yeah, for 540. I saw it and I was like, oh, this is too good of a deal to pass up. I had to get it. Um, so, yeah. Okay. What do you think about S2 comments such as seven, so, such as the ones out of uh, 7.5K and uh, 15K long term? Okay. That's a great question. That really is. Scylla's wound. Scylla's wound. That's a great question. So, man, I scratched myself and now my neck is red. Okay. Probably because I drank a monster. Anyway, I um, personally think that they will definitely be a lot more valuable um, probably in you know, a month from now. Um, and of course, you know, when Series 3 rolls around, they'll be more valuable. I think right now they are underrated. I really do. I think the ones out of 15,000. I am looking to buy, actually, see, for me, it's kind of like, Actually, yeah, I, I am going to buy some. Um, I am going to buy some moments out of 15,000 soon. I had recently kind of sold all of my ones out of 15,000 because I was like, no, I knew that when they came out with these base packs that the price for them would drop more. So I'm going to be buying back into some of those soon. But um but yeah, I, yeah, I, I think right now they're they're underrated, and you know I haven't been looking at the price too much because those don't particularly interest me. But they definitely, if you have them and you're like kind of like, oh my god, like why are they kind of dipping in price? They will go back up for sure, so don't worry about that. Um, what price point are you looking for on S1 comments? So, like I said, I am looking for. I have actually a list of of moments that I want to buy under a certain price points. Um, but as far as like buying floor S1 comments, because there are some comments that I, it's like they're not going for floor prices, but I'm like, okay, if they dip below this amount, I'll still get it. But um, for floor, I am, I am hoping that they go below 70. We'll see. We'll see. Do I have a favorite NBA team? Honestly, the Lakers. But the reason why on Top Shot, my favorite NBA team is uh, OKC is because uh, back when I started, um, the baller status points actually worked. And um, and basically you can rank for teams based on like the amount of moments you have and like 
your your baller status points. And I actually went through every single team and I favorited every single team one at a time to see where I would rank. And I found out that I could rank the highest if my favorite team was OKC. I know that's so nerdy. But anyway, so I was like, oh, perfect. I can rank. And now I'm like number eight for OKC. <laughs> and that's like the only reason why it's my favorite team. But anyway, um, Steph said, can we get Jen's live to 50 likes? Come on, fam, let's go. Hey, we got 55 likes. Thank you. All right. All right. So, hmm. 50 likes, we're going parabolic. How do you feel about the out of 75? Yeah, I need to get more of those, actually. I really do. My um, baller basket has been, like, telling me I should get some more of those. Um. I think LeBron will be a master challenge, including Mike Conley and Katie. It's possible. Certainly possible. Uh, what's up with Dapper and withdraw Sitch? Please. It only says 14K people out of that 250K users. WTF. Don't need the money right now, but what if emergency? 30 days. Really, Dapper? Yeah. So that is one thing that um, I think is uh, yeah first of all i joined in october i didn't really get the ability to withdraw until literally like january or maybe even february no january i got the ability so it's been months for me to get the ability to withdraw and i think that that is actually you know probably preventing a lot of people from joining. i think that's preventing a lot of the big money from joining because they're like mm, you know, it, it's more of a trustworthy thing if everybody has the ability to withdraw. But, you know, obviously they have to make sure that you're not just, I don't know, just, I don't really know. You know, I really, I can't speak on behalf of that, but I really don't. But, but I do think about that stuff when it comes to like um, dips and I'm like, I know when things dip and people need to get out. Like, I feel like the lowest point of a dip is when everyone's freaking out. They're like, oh, I can't even leave because I can't even withdraw. And like everyone's freaking out. And I'm like, okay, this is probably the bottom of the dip. This is a good sign. We'll probably be going up after this. Um, okay. All right. So curious where you think the top shot market will be a year from now. I think we'd 5x, 5 to 10x in user base from here. 5 to 10x a year from now? Hell yeah, we have to thank. I think we would definitely at, at least ten x in a year from now. Actually, I don't know for sure. Yeah, I actually do. I actually do think we would at least ten x in a year from now. Yeah, and you should only put money in you're willing to part with. You know, don't use your rent money, et cetera, et cetera, unless you're really just trying to risk it for the biscuit. But just know that you probably can't withdraw. So, okay. I wanted to also say what else did I want to say? Okay. Here's another thing I wanted to say. Um, I did answer some questions, but I wanted to talk about, you know, when it comes to your um, strategy, the most hands-off things to do, like if you're if you don't have a lot of time, like me, where you're like trying to, you know, perfectly time it when to buy and when to sell, and then using the money to reinvest, you know, at a certain price point, and et cetera, et cetera. If you really don't have much time, the most hands-off thing you can do is buy a moment and then list it for whatever price you're willing to part with it at. So let's say you buy a moment for $100 and you're like, I would love a nice 10x profit and I would 100% be willing to part with this moment if it 10 x And so you just buy it for $100 and then you list it for $1,000 and then you just leave it and you walk away and then you get an email one day saying your moment sold and then you come back and you're like, yeah, I have a thousand dollars. Like that's the most hands-off thing you can do. And um, it's the most hands-off thing you can do. And it's like the easiest way to just buy low, sell highs. If like you just, although it is nice to watch stuff for sure. But I'm just saying, you know, the most hands-off way. Actually, back when I um, started in October, I, it, it was not, things were not moving as quickly as they are now. So moments stayed at the price they were at for like, Literally, I had bought, I think I showed him one of my videos, I had bought an S1 Rare for $12 and the person that I bought it from had bought it for like $9 two months prior. Like literally the price hadn't budged for like two months, like barely. So 
So um, for me, I actually stepped away in November and December. Not fully. I was still occasionally logging in, buying packs, checking out moments occasionally. But I did step away for the most part. I wasn't on every day um, in November and December. And I actually had listed, um, I had a Dort rookie, S1 Rare rookie moment that I had bought for $25. And I had, this is my first sale ever. My first sale ever. I bought it in October. I didn't really sell anything in October. I just would buy stuff. I didn't sell stuff. And then I listed it for $50 because I was like, ooh, that would be kind of nice, right? I bought it for $25. I can list it for $50. Imagine if it sells. That would be awesome. I didn't think it would really take off so much. So then when I logged back in in January, I saw that it had sold for $50 back in December, like late December. And I was like, Oh, and it was like, you know, it was like me testing out a sale and it was like my sale went through and it was actually pretty cool. I was like, yeah, I mean, obviously now that moment's going for, I don't know, almost a thousand dollars. So obviously I could have held on to it. Like that could have been my biggest regret, but I don't regret it. I would do it again. It was my, it was my test, you know, um, but okay. So it has been 36 minutes. <laughs> So I don't know if we should keep going with this or if we should end it. Um, Join last month and I honestly don't plan on selling anything. Okay. Well, there we go. I like flipping personally. I like having my moments that I hodl and then having my moments that I flip because it helps me grow my account. It helps me grow and get more moments. But if you don't like selling, then you know what? That's actually... Probably, I mean, eventually you're probably going to sell something, but um, is it really advantageous to keep a pack closed and opening it? Only if you're willing to keep it closed for um, an extended period of time, like months. If you're if you're if you're only going to keep it closed for a couple of days, then it's like, I mean, yeah, you're practicing patience. You know, maybe baby steps. You know, practice holding a moment for a couple days and then practice holding it for a little longer. But I'll tell you what, it helps. Another thing it helps with is, is your ability to not freak out when, when things dip and you know, your account valuation goes down or like your moments dip in price. And it's like, you know, having, having unopened packs, it's like you're practicing that patience aspect of it where you're like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ride it out. I'm just gonna hold. I'm just gonna not open this pack. Like it's just, I feel like it helps with other aspects of Top Shot as well, like having the ability to be patient and then hold an open, open pack. But yeah, in the future, you'll be able to sell them on the market and, and that's, and I'll be buying them. I probably won't sell them yet. I'll probably just be buying them, but, and I know they'll be going for a pretty penny. So I gotta, I gotta um, <laughs> sell some stuff and save up some, some dapper, but chat show love to Jennifer and hit the like uh and subscribe thank you steven all right but but another thing is don't look at your um account valuation every day it really doesn't matter it really doesn't you know it's it's not really important for you to be looking at your account valuation i have a friend who literally he's like so annoying actually when he does this he, he'll he'll message me like oh my god jennifer my account is down 20 percent." i'm like chill like literally like like <laughs> It's good. It's not going to stay steady the whole time. It's not going to be going up the whole time. Like, relax. Like, it'll go back up again. But yeah, patience, I think, is the biggest skill in this game, to be honest. Just the ability to be patient. You know, if you list a moment and you want it to sell, you know, you got to be patient. Things don't always sell super quickly. But if you want something to sell quickly, you have to undercut. And people always hate the undercutters, but that's how the game works. Like, if you want something to sell quick, you want to undercut, especially if, you know, we're in a dip and not everyone's buying so quickly. When we're in a pump, you could probably list it for a couple extra dollars higher and it would sell quickly. But when we're in a dip, you have to undercut in order for something to sell ASAP, you know? So, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with flipping. People always give flippers a hard time. I think there's nothing wrong with flipping as long as you're flipping for a profit and not flipping at a loss, which in my last video, I showed how you can see when people sell at a loss. And you would think it's common sense. Like, why would somebody buy a moment for $1,000 and then sell it a week later for $600? They literally just lost like $400. Why would they do that? Well, it's because they get impatient and they see some other moment that they really want 
And they're like, oh, I need free up the capital right now. Like I need to sell this ASAP and they sell and they end up losing money and it's not a good habit to get into. You know, very few people can sell things at a loss and be able to actually benefit from that. Very few people. It's not a good habit to get into unless you're super skilled, like you're a professional poker player or something. But I would rather play it safe than sorry. I would rather not sell it at a loss. Um, just waiting until Top Shot opens to China. That's basically the main reason I'm hesitant to sell any LEs. To sell any LEs, I mean, eventually everything goes LE. But um, yeah, that'll be interesting. I heard that there are a lot of NBA fans in China. Um, okay. Should I hold my Migo Jamarant past the challenge? Okay, here's another thing. Um, moments do tend to dip after challenges, at least initially. Yeah, they'll probably go back up to the price that they were during the challenge, but prices are inflated during challenges. If you're not completing a challenge, I would 100% recommend selling a moment sometime during a challenge if it's a part of a challenge. Um, unless you have reason to believe, you know, they're going to do another challenge with it or something like that and you want to wait a little longer. Challenge moments are typically inflated, and yes, they do dump after the fact, which is why um, sometimes it's nice to, if you really wanted a moment, just wait till after the challenge is over, and it's a part of a challenge, just wait till after the challenge is over, and then buy it. And literally, it's like so much cheaper. Like, it's crazy. Um, uh, thanks for the tips. Whoa. S2 serial number under 1K, $100 value. S2 serial number. Personally, for me, I only really care about one to two digit serials. Personally, um, I don't really, I know some people are like, oh, under a thousand is good. I don't really care to buy any three digit serials. So I can't really speak on that. But, and they're harder to, I mean, in general, one to two digits are harder to sell, but three digits, definitely harder to sell. Like it, you know, um, okay. I got burned with cool cats keeping my John wall. It isn't worth crap now. Okay, let's talk about cool cats. Let's talk about cool cats because those things pump like crazy. Like literally they pump like crazy. And, and now they're taking a major dip and there's no challenge going on for cool cats right now. Keep that in mind. I think that when, um, for example, the Master Lamello challenge comes out, they're gonna pump again. So, you know, don't sell it, don't sell your cool cats out of loss. Please don't. I actually did buy a few because they're going for so cheap, literally. Uh Barbell did too. I know Barbell bought some. They're literally going for like $80 at the floor. Yeah, John Wall, I think he's going for like 98 or something like that. Like it's crazy. And I think that they'll pump again um during the Master Lamello challenge. But <laughs> yeah, they're dipping so much it's crazy um r.i.p my collection of three di digit ellies just because i don't care about three digit moments doesn't mean that other people don't you know but yeah um mellow gang i've got them all so far and away i'm selling nice that's that's awesome i got a Rui the gifts Oh, oh, nice for for ninety dollars. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, I was actually thinking about getting um, that. I would I would potentially buy Rui at ninety dollars, but I have a list of stuff I'm supposed to be buying, so probably not gonna buy that. But I would I would totally buy Rui the gift at ninety dollars. And they said there may be another challenge again in the future with the gift moment. So, but um, yeah. Okay, so um. How do you feel, this person asked the question twice, so I will say, I will address it. How do you feel about the S1 Lakers moment in the back Mamba jersey? I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's why I ignored it the first time. I don't know what that means. My top shot ID is Jennifer. Um, it's just my name. But yeah, we're okay. We're at 45 minutes. We should probably end this soon. Um, okay, so if you have any last minute questions, Feel free to ask, but let me recap my shot. This is the title. 
my strategy for buying and selling moments. Okay. Let me recap my strategy for buying and selling moments. I like to hodl S1, really all S1 moments, but mostly my end goal is to have mostly S1 rare and legendary moments. And in order to do that and accumulate more, I need to flip stuff. So I like to buy things when nobody cares about them and then sell them when everybody does. So, you know, I like to flip $2 moments, you know, to, to $10, $20 uh, when they turn out Lee. I like to, oh, I'm also um, buying some uh, badge moments that I will be flipping during the time when the badges come out. Um, and then, yeah, so, I, and then mostly I use S2 as flipping material and just use the money to put back into S1. So that, that just to recap, that's my strategy. Um, and I, and if I have to have a favorite moment that I like to buy, to be honest, I really like buying um, S1 Rare, the finals, um, Kelly Olnick moment. I have about five of his two digit cereals that I bought for under, I bought them all for under like, uh, well, the most expensive one I bought was like six twenty five. I bought two of them for like six hundred. I think one of them, I don't know how much I paid, like a hundred for them, like longer ago, like a month ago or something. And I like to, uh, I'm trying to get more of him, but kind of does cost a lot. Okay, all right. Let's see. Any any last? Can you pronounce? No, I can't pronounce Luca's last name. Actually, someone said it's Luca Doncic. So. Um, but here's the good thing. You don't have to know how to pronounce players' names in order to be good at Top Shot. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Resolvable Cow wanted to buy a moment from me that had me in the transaction history. So they were looking at the moments ad for sale, and they ended up buying one that I had opened from a pack. And they were like, your name isn't in the transaction history at this moment. I was like, Ooh, that's because I opened it from a pack. But yeah. Um, okay. So. Okay. 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 What's your prediction for rookies and guys with triple badges? Bad idea to sell before they get their badge. Um. Um. Not particularly, but if you want to maximize your profit, it might be best to either sell once every, like once it's widespread knowledge, like like literally maybe the day before the badges come out and everyone's just trying to buy as many as they can before the badges come out, that might be a good time to sell, but or also like when the actual badges come out. But it's I don't think it's necessarily widespread knowledge yet. So is it a bad idea to sell before then? Not necessarily, but could you, you know, could you, uh, could you make a lot more money if you waited? Yeah, you probably could. And I don't like to predict prices. I don't know, but, um, but I, I don't think that they are near their potential for what price they'll be. And, and Honestly, I would hope that nobody here is buying the are buying the badge moments when they come out with them. Like that's when you should be selling them. Like hopefully you're not buying them at that time. But I'll, I'll be selling them. Um. Okay. So we all still early. Congrats to everyone. Let's stop undercutting each other. Look, undercutters are always going to exist, okay? You're going to end up undercutting people too. It's just how the game goes. Um, but yeah, especially if you want to free up capital really quickly and you want you see something you really want to buy and you're already profitable on a moment, when you list it, you undercut. Okay, so um, do you ever track old sales to see how much they were flippers for after? Um, like what I could have flipped it for now. No, I don't look back like that. But I, um, I do like to track, you know, when I buy moments from the market and then the amount that I sell them for just kind of see like, you know, how much of a gain I made and, and, um, 
I don't like to look back and be like, oh, I sold this moment for this much. How much could it have been now? Like, I don't like to do that because I know that I trust myself and I know that when I sold the moment, when I, when I let go of a moment, I let go of a moment. And I know that I am reinvesting the profits into something that I find to be more valuable. And so I don't regret sales that I've made in the past. You know, I don't, I just move forward. You know, it doesn't really, it's not really helpful to regret. Now, yeah, looking back at maybe previous flips and realizing, oh, I should have been more patient. You know, maybe this is a lesson for the future. Sure. But like regretting it to where like, oh, I think about it every night, how I flipped this for this much. It's like, that just doesn't do you any good. Um. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. It's been 50 minutes. <laughs> so uh, we're going to end the live now. Um, but this was fun. I actually have never gone live on YouTube before. And I wanted to test it out, to be honest, because I'm actually going to be out of town um, for like a week. I'm going to visit family and I don't think I'm going to be able to make any videos. Obviously, I'm going to make tomorrow's um, weekly update video and I'm going to make the next weekly update video next Monday. But I don't think I'll be able to make videos in between that because they take hours like from start to finish to prepare and to edit and post and all that. And I'm going to be trying to really give my family my full undivided attention. So I'm probably not going to be too active here on YouTube. Um, but I may go live sometime while I'm out visiting family because it doesn't take too much effort to go live. Like me going live for an hour, <laughs> this took less time than making a five minute video believe it or not. But I do like making those five minute videos because I know you all appreciate them. And I like that they're, and I personally love watching just like short, quick pieces of content where you know exactly what you're tuning in for. Like I love that kind of stuff. So that's why I create it for other people. Um, and, and yeah, it does take a lot of time and I'm, I don't make money from doing it, but I enjoy it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll be gone for like a week. Um, I'll, I'll post a video tomorrow, weekly update, and then see me again on Next Monday, you may see me live before then, you may not, but if you don't already, oh, Steph just plugged my Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, I tweet daily, I think. <laughs> um, my Twitter is Jennifer underscore pseudo, S-U-T-T-O. That's my username on there. And, um, and then is that all the social media? Yeah, I think that's all the social media I have. Sometimes I do Clubhouse. I'll probably do a Clubhouse, I'm sure, next week as well. And... Um, yeah, shout out to Barbell. Barbell's a homie. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. I'll see you in the next video and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.